John chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. I think Brother Dale has it pulled up over here. King James Version. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay from the spittle, and he anointed his eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went this way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said unto him, How were thine eyes opened? And that is, How were thine eyes opened? Found in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. Amen. You may be seated. All right, as we move on to prayer requests, once again, remember, remember Brother Joe this morning. Once again, fell, hurting the shoulder. I remember Brother Carl. Any other names to add to our list this morning? Okay, thank you. Any others this morning? All right, any other spoken requests? All right, several of those. Brother Harold. Brother Earl, appreciate that. Good to see each one of everybody here today. Are you glad to be in God's house? Amen. Sure. Okay, well, this is set back and enjoy because God's got some wonderful time for us. Brother Dale's here. He's going to be bringing the message in song, and uh, God is so good, isn't he? And so let's stand as we get ready to go to prayer. And if you can't stand, we understand that. But if you can, well, then uh, let's do that for a minute here. And bring all these petitions to him because he hears and understands and he will hear. I know a lot of people are mixed up on say, well, I wonder where God doesn't heal everybody. He said he just picks, he's got his chosen ones he picks. No, he doesn't have a chosen one. But he said that the will of God may be manifested. So that's what we're going to get our sights a little higher than just ourselves. And, uh, and get them on what the full mission is. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for your love to us. We thank you, Jesus, that you do care about us. You do love us, Lord, and we are grateful for these that have gathered into your house this morning. Others would have, would have been here, Lord, if would they could they had been health-wise or in personal situations that hindered them from coming into your house. But let us pray, Lord, for each and every one that has worshiped you in spirit already this morning and has talked to you and they said, yes, Lord, yes to your will and your way. And Lord, why was the blind man healed? And wow, what a conversation that was. And that Lord is all for the furtherance of your kingdom and your work that you left here to do. And we're glad, Lord, that we now can be an example of you to lift you up, Jesus. And we're going to give you the praise for what you worked through Brother Dale and through the entire service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Don't you just love Jesus? He set us free. What did he set us free from? Sin. If you accepted him as Lord of your life, he died for you. He set us free. We're like a bird out of a cage. We've got freedom to go serve the Lord. It's a wonderful thing when you know Jesus. This one says he set me free. Thank you. 
from pure love. I praise him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate those testimonies. Really do. And I believe probably every one of us has been redeemed by his blood can say, I remember when I was set free. There's no greater joy than to know that you've asked the Lord to forgive and his faithfulness to do that. All right. Gushers, if you'll come and uh, we'll prepare to receive the offering this morning. Thank you for standing by the kingdom wonderful, wonderful ministry. You're not going to be forsaken or left behind. God is going to continue to bless and keep. Thank you, dear Jesus, for all your kindness and love to us. We ask you now that your wonderful spirit will dwell upon the offering of the Lord, and it will meet every need to we can further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is there to help in all the things you do. 
And one of the things we need to do in our life so that we can feel good is to count our blessings. You know, when you start counting all those bad things that ever happen, you're not, you're not blessed by that. But if you'll start counting and even writing them down, you'll find that God's blessed you more than all the problems you've caused. What did I say? The problems you caused? Yeah, I said that. You cause yourself a lot of problems. <laughs> and if we follow the word, my, how much better things go for us. I was reading in Proverbs, uh, I can't remember the chapters. It seemed like it was chapter 3. Um, but man, so many good things in Proverbs. It tells you about how to live your life properly. And, and if we obey the Lord in all things, things are going to go better for us. It even tells us if we treat our, treat our brothers and our sisters right, that they're going to be more apt to treat you right. That's right. Of course, if you treat them bad, they're probably going to treat you bad back. So just remember what the Bible says is true and follow it, follow it. Count your blessings. This one is uh, something we need to do every day. looking at his children she's not we're all brothers and sisters in the lord isn't that a wonderful thing a little bit hard to wrap our minds around that but that's the way god looks at us you know uh, 
life is like a vapor and it just vanishes away. So we're all here just for a, just a moment of time. And when you start thinking about eternity, I start thinking about eternity with Jesus. Mm, that's going to be good. You know, if we had eternity to spend in these bodies right here in this life, sometimes we would think we wouldn't want to be here forever, wouldn't we? But eternity with Jesus is a lot different. Amen. God's wonderful people. And, and I'm talking about you this morning. That you know you're part of God's wonderful people. If you're part of the family, that is. And I suspect everybody here is a Christian this morning. I certainly hope so. Amen. protects us from many things we don't even know what's going on. Uh, as a mail carrier, driving down these single lane gravel roads, not too slow, that's the way mail carriers are, you know. And when they meet somebody else along the road, it's hard to get out of the way. And I drove the mail route for 30 years. Never one time have I ever had one head-on collision. 
I had uh, three accidents, but all three of them were somebody else's fault. They won a bunch of slabs come off of a truck and hit me in a curve. Could have killed me, but I'm still here today. God's good to me. Another one coming around a gravel road, I got up on the side over on uh, the bank and a lady was on the ground she, road, she was coming my way. She didn't see me, and when she finally did see me, she oversteered, slid into me, and then um, I had one other accident that slips my mind. I was talking about that a little earlier, but God's been so good to me. And uh, in my life as a Christian, uh, I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. I, 67 years old, know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'm headed to heaven. And you know, people make mistakes in life, but Jesus will forgive. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hey, you've got it made if you just ask Jesus for it. Jesus wants to take care of you. He wants you to have a good life. This song says it wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. <clears throat> and I really wouldn't. But I've been saved a long time. Nazarene camp up here about 1962 at Cherokee Pass at a kids camp. And I've walked with him ever since then. And God has been so good. And he wants to be good to you too. <clears throat> In fact, he is good to you. Sometimes you just don't have your eyes open to see it. But he's, he's you know, you hear people talk about, I got your back. Jesus really does. He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your sides. And just call upon him. And it'll all be better if you will. Wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Thank you. 
Sweet peace is 
down and we'll talk to Jesus for a moment. No better way than to talk to Jesus. Amen. Jesus wants to talk to us too. He does. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again that we can come in your presence. Lord, you're always right there to help us and guide us and use us, dear Jesus. And so we pray for each one that's here at the altars this morning. We just pray, Lord, that they'll grow up as day by day to know that Jesus is their supplier. And he's going to help them, guide them, use them in his way. Lord, I ask you now to use us each day as we walk day by day to further your divine kingdom. And Lord, for all that you've done for us, all you're going to do for us, we want to just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. God be the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's done, right? Got your Bibles open, and uh, we're going to look here in a few moments to the Gospel of John. Story here that the man did born blind. Think about that. This this man didn't create this later on with some sort of an explosion or something come across his life. But uh, maybe after he's 40 years old or 50 years old, but he was born that way. He'd never been able to see in you know, all his life. And I I I, just, I love the story. And uh, what I'd like to say to each of us today. I'm blaming the pastor, Pastor Layman. If we're ever going to do anything for Jesus, let's do it now. Amen. Let's do it now. Amen. There might be a better day for this blind man. There was a better day. He walked around with a cane. I remember delivering in the, on the cities here a few years ago, and I heard this cane, and I had backed across the, the sidewalk we're getting to this place and hadn't quite cleared it yet and so I could hear this cane hitting the sidewalk and I seen this young man he wasn't very old and uh, he's pecking his cane along on the concrete trying to figure out where he was at you know I said wow what a life what a life and I knew he was going to walk right into the side of my trailer so I got down and I went to him and I told him I said I got the sidewalk blocked here so I said you know they'll help you get around it and uh that's what we're going to do. If we're going to do anything, let's do it now. I could have said, well, he's been here a lot of times, evidently, so he'll be able to identify that something's in his way this morning. But, you know, I don't know what it'd be like to be born blind. I can close my eyes, and you can too, and I can see what a horrible world that would be in, and not being able to see, to, to drive, or to see your children, or just on and on and on. But this, this blind man, he was the same way. And his, his disciples asked him, Master, who did sin? So when people are going through difficult times in their life, don't try to think, you know, that there's sin in your life. If you're living a clean, holy life for Jesus, just continue to live it. Don't pay attention to what people said. I, I never will forget what my brother said one time when he was in the hospital. He said somebody come to visit him one day. He said, uh, Preacher, he said, yes. He said, if you want to go ahead and confess what you've done wrong, uh, then I'll pray for you. And you'll be healed. He said, well, I didn't do anything wrong. I got sick. Yeah, but you didn't get sick just by getting sick. You, you, did, you did something wrong. And see, I, I don't want to ever believe that. I, I believe this man that was actually born blind. I don't think he did one thing to cause his... Uh, eyesight not to be there whenever he came into this world. But I do like what it said. And it said that he, uh, he, Jesus came by his way. And he wants to come by our way today too. He really does. And uh, in a special way. So if, if there's anything I need to do, anything you need to do, if, if all I got to do now is just to preach to others, I got to listen to what Paul had to say. Paul said, if I just preach to others, I've had to be careful because I might find myself as a castaway when I stand before the Lord. So it's not what you're doing is thinking that this is going to be a passport to heaven. The blood is Jesus Christ is the passport to heaven. 
these are just deeds and things we want to do in respect for what he has accomplished in our lives. And so I, uh, I'm grateful this morning for his wonderful saving power. And I love that song where it said, do you, do you, our sight, do we remember? Sure, I remember it very well. Never forgot it. If I could just clear and richer every day of my life. And I am certainly am grateful. But this blind man, when the disciples asked him, who does he? He said, neither. Jesus is very clear sometimes. He doesn't just beat around the bush. He said, neither did this man sin or his parents sin that he was born blind, but that the works might be manifested. And so sometimes we're going to go through things in life that we don't understand why. But let's keep our faith and our eyes upon him because he knows best for our life. So the first thing that I wanted to kind of mention and said here is that uh, there's some things we need to do now. And one of them is our fellow man. Instead of finding out that we got time to criticize them, maybe they're not doing as well financially as we are. Maybe they're not doing as well health reasons why as we are. And so we find it so easy to say, I wonder what they did. I wonder what it is that they've done. Why did they get financially ahead of itself? Why, why do they have to be always broke? Why do they have to always be asking for somebody to help them? Well, the Bible said, you know, if we're going to lend a helping hand, let's don't wait till we have all the answers. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. When God says, I want you to help them, and you feel like you can be a help to them, that may be your prayer life. It may be your giving financially. It may be, I don't know what it might be in your life or my life. But let, let's just do it. And so I'm going to mention it. I've I got a scripture I want to read over in Luke's gospel. Uh, the 23rd verse. Uh, uh, 22nd verse. I'll back up one. Saying, the Son of Man must come and uh, suffer many things. Now, this is the Son of Man. This is Jesus. He's going to suffer many things. Uh, so I, I believe that maybe we ought to criticize the Lord then. He don't need to suffer. What's he, what's he doing wrong? What's he doing wrong? Hey, we've got to get out of this. And we've got to begin to lift our fellow man up instead of pushing him down. And if we're going to find ourselves picked up and blessed and used, then we're going to have to find the same thing. Because it said, that he being rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and the slain, and he raised up the third day ago. And he said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me daily. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what a man, what a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Remember the young man who was so rich, and he said to the Lord, they had a conversation. He said to the Lord, he said, yes, Lord, I've done all these things that you mentioned, every one of them. There's not one thing that I haven't done. That's good. That a young man, he, he, he got rich, and he, uh, and Jesus is talking to him about some of the things, and he said, every one of them. Honored my father and mother. I've done everything. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just in good condition, Lord. He said, but only one thing. He said, take what you have and sell it and give it to the poor. Take what you have and give it to the poor. And the rich man, I can see him, the young man, he got up and shook himself and said, did I really hear what he said? He wants me to get rid of everything I got to give it to somebody else? You don't have to just give it to the world, don't get me wrong. But if God is speaking to your heart and he's asking you to do something for somebody or asking me to do something for somebody, Let's be free to do it, okay? Let's be free to do it. Let's don't wait until a better day. Because I want to tell you something. When we get to heaven, there's not any of this, any of these things are going to have to be brought to existence because of us. Not every, not another single one. So I, I, I listen to them and, and Galatians. I, I read it over in Galatians. I'd like you to turn there with me just for a few seconds. I'd like to read a couple of scriptures in our hearing. And that's in the sixth chapter of the book of Galatians. Sixth chapter of Galatians. In, in, in our Bible study on Wednesday night, Job, Job reads every Wednesday night. She reads the scriptures she has for these uh, years that I've been here. And so what a blessing, what a joy. That I'll, I'll take this here in Galatians this morning. And uh, uh, it says in the first verse, brethren, 
If a man be overtaken in fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. In other words, Jesus didn't find any way that we ought to be able to criticize somebody that's going through some rough times in their life. We're, we should be there to encourage them and strengthen them. He says in the second verse, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. But every man that proves his own work, then shall he have rejoicing along uh, himself alone, and not in others. And that's where we got to have our joy and our peace. It's not what other people think about us, but it's what we know about our own self, that we're doing the best we know how, and we're not going to listen to somebody else who's trying to shut us down or, or lift us up. Alone, we're going to take our own wonderful peace that we have with our Lord. For every man that bears his own burdens, and that's his sixth verse now, and when, the, when it ought, when it's taught in the word, uh, communication unto him that teaches it in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, he shall also reap. For if he sows it to his flesh, he shall reap corruption. But if he sows it to the spirit, shall the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, but in due season we will reap not. And as we have therefore opportunities, let us do good unto all men, especially to them of the household of faith. We in the church world doesn't have any place in it that I can read that we ought to be judges or authority over somebody else. We ought to pray for them, encourage them, and strengthen them, and let God use in a mighty, mighty way. So I'm, I'm thankful for his word, and I want to live, and I pray that you do, and we'll all together lift a helping hand in this troubled day in which we're living in. We're living in a very troubled day. And you know, uh, the love of many are waxing cold, and and uh, darkness is creeping upon the face of the earth, but you can be a light in their pathway. I can be a light into somebody's pathway, and uh, we want to do it. So I'm going to ask you on this other thing, because you got to have to do it now. You ever been thinking about being baptized? Now, I want to tell you something about baptism. Some people say, well, when I got baptized, I got saved. Well, that's okay if you did that. But I want to tell you something. The water in our baptism and the water down here in the creek it has never been powerful enough to wash away one sin, let alone all the sin. So water baptism is an outward sign of the inward work that has been done. And I believe if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's where your salvation comes, through the blood of Jesus with his death on the cross and his resurrection and going back to the Father, his blood is what blots out your sins. And then you're going to kneel down here and come to the altar uh, I remember baptism in the churches used to be a powerful thing. I mean, people are going to be baptized after they got converted. They'd have different people come and had uh, to see, you know, the family would. I want you to come and see. I remember Bruce's brother Charles. Some of you remember him, you know, a tall, lanky guy, but he, he got saved. And later on, he, he wanted to be baptized. And the family invited a lot of people. I'm telling you, the church, you know, they'll back them out just to see somebody baptized. But when Charles came up out of that water, I'm going to tell you what, there was a spirit fell on that congregation. <laughs> they began to weep and cry and rejoice. And so what it is, you want to identify with this world that you've changed directions. You're no longer walking in darkness, but you're walking in light. I'm walking in light. And so think about that. So if you haven't been baptized, don't wait, because they're going to be a baptism in heaven. It has all been done through John and through Jesus and the rest of them back then. So we're going to, to this wonderful city where there'll be no sickness or no sorrow, no more financial problems, no more. This, it's going to be wonderful, folks, so don't miss it. So if you've got some things you need to do, if you haven't been baptized, the pastor would love to share with you and, and talk with you. And if you have some questions and you need them answered, uh, just, just let me see. Now, I've been very slow about doing this while they're... Uh, uh, you know, this virus is going on about baptism and getting in the same water. I don't know all this information yet. 
But I want to promise you something. If you want to be baptized, you know, we'll even do it individually. And uh, I mean, at a certain time, a certain place, but our baptistry is ready for you. And uh, we'd love to see you. If you've really been born again, don't wait. Show Jesus that you really love him and you're going to serve him. If you haven't ever become a member of the church, now I'm talking about when you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, and you, you haven't ever been a member of the church, I'm going to tell you, when we get to heaven, all of those are heavenly members. So there's not going to be any unmembered churches up there in heaven. It's going to have to have done now. So if you love the church and you care for it, and you'd love to see uh, you know it grow and be something for your children and your grandchildren or great-grandchildren, don't wait till tomorrow. Do it now. Come and, come and see the pastor and let's talk it over and see what the problem is, if there is a problem. If there's no problem, why don't you just say, Pastor, I, I'd like to become a member. Talk to me about it. And let's talk about it. Let's become a member of this wonderful church. You can read it in Matthew 5, 14 and 15. Uh, church members uh, should become a, 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 a encouragement to somebody else to become part of what you've been part of all your life. So think about that. And, and the next thing I'd like to mention now, if we're ever going to start tithing, you say, I tell you, preacher, now I, I've got debts that I've got debts. I've got more debts. I bought the four wheelers and I bought, uh, uh, you know, the biggest lawnmower they had and I bought this and I bought this and I bought that and then and, and, and they kind of went bad on me so I bought another one. I'm just so in debt I couldn't give a dime to the Lord. I'm asking you now, why don't you change that thinking about you and about me, and why don't we just start investing in God's kingdom? Why don't you just sit down? You know, I, I told you this a long time ago, when I went down to, Ruth and I went down to this finance place, and we were it just, you know, kind of behind, and, you know, and wanted to get some extra money, and I went down there, and I said, Ruth, we don't have a dime, but we're going to go down there and see whether he'll refinance this thing. I'd like, I'd like to see some people, if they can't give it $500 or can't give a dollar, talk to the Lord about it and say, Lord, I'm coming to you. Now, you'll not find this scripture in the Bible, but just come. Put God first in your life is what I'm trying to say. Start tithing. Start putting it in. Let, let the devil take back seat in your life. You let God and the church become first in your life. And I'm going to tell you, you say, why? Because you know, you, you, no, no, no. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about your personal blessings. You talk about your personal blessings. Can a man rob God? Where do I rob you, Lord? And he said, in your tithes and offerings. So what do you do, preacher? Well, I haven't seen very many people that haven't been Christians a whole length of time that ever not really been tithers. Somehow they begin to see the light and they begin to see, hey, the church has to exist by my faithfulness as well as it does somebody. Why should somebody else have to be dedicated to pay all the bills and see everything and the lights turned on and you, you flip the switch and the, and the gas and the electric or for the, for the air conditioning? Why should somebody? No, no. I believe every devout Christian that really wants to see Jesus and wants to do his will will begin to work out a situation with the Lord. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. 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 And I'm going to tell you, I found it to be true, and I know it's the same way with you. So if you're not tight, you're not a tight, I beg you, I beg you for your own good, and for your family, and for your 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 your, your mate, and for your children that's going to come up and follow your footsteps. I beg you to start putting in what is rightly God's. He said, I don't want you, I don't want the 100%. I, I don't want, I, all I want is 10%. I'll let you live on 90. That's a pretty good God, isn't it? We couldn't breathe without breathing his air. I mean, God never did anything for me. Well, you know, the food wouldn't be out here and be brought up if it hadn't been planted by somebody. And, wow, wow, wow. Okay, I, I see, preacher. So, Somebody else is paying the price for everything that we're enjoying unless you're a part of that. So if you aren't tithing yet, Malachi 3, verses 8 through 10, read it when you get home, and then Jesus taught it in Matthew 23, verse 23, and so read it when you get home. 
And another area that could be uh, uh, lost in many lives uh, is soul winning. You know, there's people that go from January, the fiscal year, all the way to December and not talk to one person in that year. Now, they're professing Christians now, we're professing Christians, but we never talk to one person about where they're going to spend eternity. We just can't get it ready. You know why? We don't spend time asking God how to do this. And God can speak to us and he can share with us in just the right words. You don't have to have a 10-page book printed and you, you just be obedient and I'd be obedient to the Holy Spirit and we'll reach that person that will come to Jesus. It may be by our walk, it may be by our talk, but and it could be through the word also. So think about it. So if you haven't led anybody to Jesus yet, we're in July. And if you haven't talked to somebody where they're going to spend eternity, and they're going to go, a journalist is talking about the young man that worked there. Well, if he's 50-something, yes, he's a young man. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to be old to die anymore, but I'm going to tell you, you're calling an election sure, and mine is too. You get up in the 80s and you get into the 90s, and you better mark it down because you're not going to spend very many more days on the face of this earth. It just marked it down. You know, I, I read the article the other day of one of the players of sports. He's 103 years old. I didn't know we had one like that, but I just read it on the computer. 103 years old. Wow. But that, that's. But that's. You don't find very many of them out walking around doing, do you? At that age, you don't find very many in their 90s or in the 80s. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it is appointed to man wants to die. But after that, then there is a judgment bar. Everyone is going to do an account for their life, what they right. have done. So I'm just saying if we've got something we need to do, well, let's do it now. If we know we have a loved one that's lost, and like I said, our home is a good place to start. It is a wonderful place to start. Yes. And I'm telling you, you should, well, don't work that way, preacher. Well, the little girl down here in one of the revivals I was in, said, you know, and they had a couple of little children, <clears throat> but she had a husband that was unsaved, and she got so burdened in that revival for her husband. He didn't come to revival, but he was unsaved. And she said, I want you to pray for him. I want you to pray for him. Always put it on somebody else. That's the way to do it. But God understands that, and that's what our position is for somebody else. But how about our own self. What are we, when are we ever going to do? When are we ever going to do? So she come down on Friday night of that revival and she said to the pastor, Pastor, I want to invite you and my the evangelist over to my house right after the church tonight because God has spoken in my heart and I want to go home and I want us to talk to my husband about Jesus. But see, he needs Jesus. We need Jesus in our home. We need Jesus in our marriage. We just need Jesus. So if there's something we need to do, let's do it now. Let's go away. And I remember we got over there, and that young man was sitting there in his, in, in, in his chair, and he, his wife said, I brought the pastor and the man was over here tonight. And, Honey, I, I've got a burden for you, and I'd like to see you give your heart to Jesus, and we have a wonderful Christian home. A, a wonderful Christian marriage and would you would you pray and that young man just spun around in that chair just like he said how long were you waiting on me I've been waiting on you and he spun around and got down and he prayed a prayer and he said oh Lord forgive me for my sins and I want to be a Christian father I want to be a Christian husband, I want to be an example to my children and to the future of the church. And he gets up. He said, that's all there is to it, preacher? I'm telling you, the wind of lost souls is leaning heavy upon us, but it is upon God. God did his best. He sent the best offering he could give, his own son. And then he died. But you know what? Jesus rose again, and he lives at the right hand of his father. So I want to come to the closing here, but I want to 
There's some issues here that are very, very important in your life as a, as a born-again Christian. And I'm, I'm just praying that, that if we're going to do this thing, so let's do it now. Let's just, let's just get account. Let's, do, let's don't blame this virus on any more. Let's, let's just, you know, like I said about Bible study, I, I want to get back to a smaller room. I really do. I, I, it, it's hard to have a Bible study in a big room. If you're right here, it's hard to have people all the way in the back, all the way in the front. And it's greater. When, when somebody told me, he said, Preacher, I'm going to tell you one thing, and I identify with this when he's telling me. If my congregation is not all in unity and up to the front, and I'm talking, I know that when they're scattered out, he said, What are you doing, Preacher? Getting on? No, no, I'm telling you, and just listen to what I'm trying to say because. These spirits that are dispatched out, they hinder the services here that we're having and everybody else. But the more room there is, hey, they're not afraid of the front and they're not afraid of life. So if, if that, and so if, if these spirits can get in these front pews and they can begin to mock, you say, well, you know, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you, something. I've had it where almost every word has been crammed down in my mouth because the congregation was too far back. And so my prayer is, I want to have some tremendous Bible studies, but i got to get back into the room where we're smaller and where we can be all, you know, identifying one another. Not all these spirits are trying to take control of it. And you know, but I said Wednesday night, I said I'm not going to do it while this virus is creeping its way back. But as soon as it can and we're released, and we can go back into our room smaller to where we can have some Bible studies where we can identify, hey, this is not for somebody else. It's for me. It's for me. I, I, I come to this Bible study not just to say I've been to so many Wednesday nights, but I've come to this Bible study I want to learn what Jesus is trying to say to me. So, here's another one that I've been hurting over for a long time. If you don't take the Lord's Supper, if you don't take communion when it's offered to you, now, I said this the other day, and it kind of got mixed up a little bit, I think, but I said the President of the United States is supporting abortion. And abortion is murder. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Abortion is murder. I don't, I don't know how else you're going to get around. You can't take those little babies before they even can function on their own self. And they can drag them far enough to chop their head off or drain the blood out of their system. And you can tell me God just looks on and says, this is a wonderful world we're living in. God could bless America, but America's going to have to repent. Mm -hmm. The sign's been out there for over a year now. It said, Jesus is the answer. That's right. But I haven't heard one person come and say, you know, I've been living a wrong life, and I need, I just preach or I just want somebody to pray with me. That's what I want. I haven't had it over a year. But they don't like this burger, so they hate that they're hearing it. It's getting back up again and stirring. You can't tell me. I don't care what your rank is, whether you're a reporter in, in, in a factory or whether you're the president of the United States. You can't murder babies and then see God's presence upon them. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Jesus is not for murder, neither is his father. God created a better world than this. But like I said the other day, which I think it got mixed up a little bit, I don't believe it's a church that tells you whether you can't take communion or not. I believe it ought to be a desire in your heart. So if you haven't taken communion, you ought to say, I've got to hear this again. I've got to see what it said. Jesus said, you know, the reason why you shouldn't take communion is if you have sin in your life. But well, what are you going to do if I do? Right there in the pew or right here at the platform, I could say, Lord, I'm so sorry for the way I'm living. And I want you to blot all that stuff out now. And I'm going to ask you to forgive me because I'm going down to take communion this morning. But I know that you, if I ask you, then you'll forgive me of these things. And don't make a mockery of the Lord. You know, don't make it a ritual that you're just going to just do that to serve communion. Because what this really says is, I want you people to do this. I want you Christians to do this in remembrance that I'm coming again. That's what it says right there, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I don't know what this one says, but many, many, most of them say, remembrance of Jesus coming again. 
And that's why we take communion. That is a communion table, really. That's why a lot of churches use. And so they say, he says, do this in remembrance of me. And how we can hold back and hold back. Don't do it anymore. Right. Just whenever the communion is being served, ask the Lord. If there's anything in my life, Lord, I want you to clear it out. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm sorry, but I am going to keep in remembrance that you're coming again. And we want to be ready. We want to be ready. So, I, I, I like that. I like the Lord's Supper. And so I know you, you do too. I've served it many, many times over my years of ministry. And I've never felt a time that it was out of order. And people could examine themselves. That's what the Bible says. Examine yourselves, brother. You see whether there's anything that you couldn't come down to state communion. And so it's a wonderful thing. If you're ever going to bear your cross, if you're ever going to come to the place you're going to bear your own cross, we need to bear it down. Because when we get to heaven, we're not going to have the cross to carry. Jesus would have finally laid it down for time and eternity. And we're going to a wonderful place. There will be no more sickness and there will be no more sorrow. There will be no more heartache. It's going to be wonderful, folks. So if you got anything in your life, don't blame this person. Don't blame that person. Don't blame the church. Don't blame this one. Just say, Lord, is it me? Is it me? Am I really doing everything that I need to do? Not now. Oh yeah, it is now. I mean, <coughs> you know, I've been putting it off for a long time, but I don't want to anymore.
I want to see you. 